Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julie Warwick, and I am an organizer with Jewish Voice for Peace, Hawaii. And on behalf of all the organizations gathered here today, I extend a warm welcome and heartfelt thanks to each of you for being here. Today, we gathered just 10 days before 29 nations and over 25,000 military personnel converge in Hawaii for the 29th biennial Rim of the Pacific RIMPAC exercises. Started in 1971, RIMPAC is the world's largest international maritime warfare exercise. We are gathered outside the U.S. Pacific Fleet Headquarters, the host of RIMPAC, united across organizations and identities in our staunch opposition to RIMPAC. Despite recent claims from the U.S. Pacific Fleet about environmental stewardship and cultural protection being utmost priorities during RIMPAC, these assurances do not just fall short. They are complete fabrications. Just as they were when the military claimed drinking water was safe throughout the Red Hill crisis, or promised they would return Hawaiian lands as they found them before they began their bombings and desecration over the tenure of their leases. Just as they are when they continue to lie to our faces that a genocide is not happening in Palestine, and every measure is being taken to avoid civilian casualties. RIMPAC is presented to the world as a necessity to keep people safe. But when the bombs tested in Makua Valley are the same bombs killing tens of thousands of innocent people in Gaza, when the militaries participating in RIMPAC are actively committed genocides from Kanaki to West Papua to Palestine, and systematically oppressing people from Hawaii to Guahan to the Philippines, we must ask exactly who is being kept safe. We must listen to the realities on the ground, which always tells a different story. We must listen to Kanaka Oivi community members and activists who have been resisting RIMPAC as long as it has existed. Today, you will hear how RIMPAC serves as a training ground for genocidal regimes that are responsible for countless atrocities. How it facilitates environmental destruction across Hawaii's delicate ecosystems and threatens indigenous peoples and lands from the Pacific to Palestine. You will also hear about how Israel and the IOF will be here this year, despite being the subject of international condemnation for their ongoing genocide in Palestine. Last week, over 70 organizations and 8,000 individuals representing 92 nations called on all countries of conscience to withdraw from RIMPAC and refuse to be trained by and trained with Israel. This outcry underscores the global opposition to RIMPAC and its enablement of genocide. We are standing today in the crescendo of a world that prioritizes militaristic and imperialistic ambitions over all else. As we stand here, Deep inside our bones, we feel the enormous weight of global suffering, human carnage, and environmental destruction being left in its wake. If we continue on this path, it will render all futures impossible. And so collectively, we stand here today against RIMPAC, against militarization, and it's a it's threat to our collective future. Together, we can amplify our voices and work toward a world where justice sovereignty of indigenous peoples and peace are truly possible. I'd like to welcome up Uncle Liko Martin to open up the space. hard not to be emotional just listening to that and uh, I'm going to kahea and pule but the first part of the kahea is for to akua to come and be with us come from that place of creation and then for the families you know the ones who are the guiding lights who hold the vision going forward 
And then for all the leaves that fall from the tree, this is all of you, my Mokka, that we could pray for a piece of that es essence, a piece of it. And ask for that to help us to deal with the obstacle that is before us now. So if you would like to just hold that space in, that, in, in the things that are important to you, I would like to share that. Oh, every day. Today is a significant day, the 17th of June, 127 years ago to this day, Her Majesty Queen Lil Kalani made her way out of harm's way to Washington, D.C. to file a formal complaint with the Department of State of the United States. The significance of that complaint, which still sits on the book, it's like an unanswered prayer. It, what she did was she outlined the ramifications that through time would occur because of what took place on January 17, 1893. When the myth of the overthrow and I call it a myth because what is important here and the, her, the, the, um, for her to go there was to remind the United States of the obligation to protect the Hawaiian Islands and the, its inhabitants. And this occurs because Queen Little Okalani wisely asked the her ohana to stand down they did not engage in warfare against a much superior force which would have certainly led to the loss of life so what she did was she activated invoked a portion of what is known as the law of nations to guide uh, principles that are there, they're written down to guide the conduct in the event that such a situation had occurred January 17th. So what did she do? She yielded. And when she did that, 
she invoked a treaty of protection under the United States Constitution, Article 3, Section 8, and under what is known as the Law of Nations. If you wonder why there's such a thing as a trust obligation in the Hawaiian Islands, that's the root of it. That goes back to the core of what we're dealing with. So this situation with Grimpac, of course it endangers all of our resources and, and brings forth all this weaponry that our one of our duties as a neutral, inviolable power that we are, okay, is to prevent our lands from being used for the purpose of developing weaponry will make war against people that we are have no conflict against okay so this is this is a, a main focus of why stop rim pack it's time for protection protection of the hawaiian islands 1893 hawaii was turned into a theater of war at the same time, what occurred was a civil war. A civil war was protracted on, 18, in, on January 17, 1893. How does this condition live today? It showed up on Mauna Kea, where you have people of their own families that are standing there ready to arrest. We are in a state, a condition of civil war. I wear these collars, and of course this, you know, to represent what is happening for the people in Palestine. We have our own brand of apartheid in the Hawaiian Islands, okay? It's not like it all happened from October 7th to now, which has happened there. It's been a long process of genocide. So it's very hard to see, okay? So these colors, we are under a state of apartheid, under civil war, under military occupation, okay? Belligerent occupation, because so far as I know, the United States declaration of war never has been lifted. And who do they ask to, to have temp permission? There's nobody to ask except the very government, provisional government, that from the time of 1893 till now, in the form of the state of Hawaii, you're still asking the guys that you set up for the permission to come in. So those are issues that just, but just to make a little bit of our story clear, that's what I, I was told to, to share with you this morning. Okay, our issues of apartheid. So, uh, so, the letter today the significance of today and Queen Yolo Kalani when she filed that letter in 1993 okay, in the United States Congress you've heard about this apology resolution and of course the apology resolution the apology was made but what did now occur was to acknowledge the ramifications of the Ill illegal acts. So I'm saying this because that is our program. That is our direction, our focus going forward to hold the United States, account, the Congress, and the American people, for most of the part, don't even know what occurred. Okay? To bring it to them in a respectful, honorable manner so that they can hold themselves accountable. From 1993 till now, because there was never an accountability, it was like back to the Oklahoma gold rush days. Go for it, stake out your claim. And so now you have people who are just occupying the lands, okay, in, in any fashion that they want to. And so this is this importance of today. Okay going forward and uh, and of course I think I want to mention we just witnessed the celebration of the families from Polynesia coming here and it's ironic that they just left 
and here's a whole nother group coming in. Now we know that they're under the gun, okay, like we are under the gun, but yet they made their presence need. So safe journey for them, prayers for them, uh, you know, for the Kanaki, who, that's just like 1959 is occurring over there. Like 1959, what happened? The United States used the United Nations system to implant, to force another provisional government upon which the Hawaiian people did not have a choice. And that government, like the one in 1893, had the military power that we were not capable of defending ourselves against. But the United States is not off the hook, not by any means. And neither is the state of Hawaii and all the way down to the municipalities that have actually, since 1993, because of the failure to identify and deal with the ramifications, we are in a situation of collapse. So anyway, I get in the signal that, you know, well, I'm glad and thank you very much to the organizers to be able to share this and um, look forward to look forward to the season. This is the season of ku to stand upright and remember that peace is the prize. Peace. All right, thank you, Uncle Liko. My name is Rose. I'll be your folks' MC for today. And now we'll be calling up Lamlani Tele from the Ho'opai Pono Peace Project. of humanity needs to stand up to protect. Peace requires aloha aina. And aloha aina means stop bombing our ocean. Stop bombing our land. Stop militarizing our people. Stop this mentality of war that needs to end on this planet. Aloha means it's time to stand up against militarization, against desecration, against the stealing of Aina, and the destruction of culture and peoples all over the world. Hawaii and Palestine are two ears of the earth, of our mother earth. And when those ears hear the call, they hear the voice of the people all over the world saying, it's time. It's time for peace. And peace means stop it right now. Stop the destruction. Stop the occupation. Get out of our country. Get out of Palestine. Get out of Kanaki. And when I say get out, I mean the whole colonial mentality. People are people. 
human beings are beautiful and humanity must stand together regardless of where we come from with the indigenous peoples of every single land of this planet and that is how we will huli the toxic blanket of colonialism that has been laid upon our entire earth and must be thrown off so that these seeds of the future can grow. Mahalo. All right, now we'll be having Heilani Sunoda Pale from Ka Lahui Hawaii up to the mic. Aloha. My name is Heilani Sunoda Pale. I am the spokesperson for Ka Lahui Hawaii. I'm Kanaka Maoli and I can trace my genealogy to Papa, Mother Earth, and Wakea Sky Father from whom all Kanaka Maoli are descended. We are here to stand against RIPCA, the Rim of the Pacific, the world's largest international maritime exercise that takes place on our Aina and in our Moana. Where colonizing nations play war games in order to bring death and destruction to other indigenous peoples around the world. The violence, death, and exploitation is nothing new to my people. The life-giving bodies of women have always been on the front line of these destructive interactions and the most vulnerable. From 1778, when Captain Cook first stepped foot on our shores, we have been bombarded with mass death, disease, violence, exploitation. Women at that moment were on the front line of contact, quote unquote, with not just the Western world, but with capitalism as the goods that was traded. In 1893, the U.S. landed troops without cause or provocation on our shores, threatening violence, so that, small, so that a small group of Haole businessmen would, could overthrow our peaceful nation and our beloved Queen of It's been 250 years. The violence that comes with militarization and commodification of our Oceania is nothing new to us to Kanaka Maoli, and it continues to this day with RIMPAC, which is set to begin this month. With the military regatta participants um, and the nations that are coming, 29 of them, come an increase in crime and, ex and sexual exploitation of women and children. Women's bodies are the sites of reproduction and like the land, like the Aina, they are at risk. Military presence and occupation is a threat to our ability to sustain life here in Hawaii and Oceania. Global warming, rising seas, and disappearing islands is being viewed by the U.S. military, the largest producer of greenhouse gases in the world. Today, it is imperative for life itself that we stand against RIPAC, the participant nation of Israel, who is committing genocide against our brothers and sisters in Palestine. In real time, on a scale never before seen, on May 27th, the United Nations released a report of the Independent International Commission of Inquiry on the occupied Palestinian territories. In that report, they state that 35,000 Palestinians have been murdered. Um, of them, 28,682 were women and children, um, including women and children, sorry, Kalamai. The number that was injured is 77,908. In that report, they also state that 1.1 million people 
in Palestine, in occupied Palestine, face catastrophic levels of food insecurity. They go on to list numerous crimes against humanity and war crimes that Israel is committing against the indigenous people of Palestine. Israel, and this is a quote from the report from the United Nations, Israel has weaponized the withholding of life sustaining necessities, cutting off supplies of water, food, electricity. The frequency, prevalence, and severity of sexual and gender-based crimes perpetuated against Palestinians since October 7th across the occupied Palestinian territory indicate that SGBB are part of ISF operating procedures. They condone the public stripping and nudity of both men, women, and children. And this is what this is what they're doing to their own indigenous people. They're coming here to Hawaii. So right now, as a Kanaka Maui, as a representative of Kalahui Hawaii, I would like to say to Israel, you are not welcome here. We stand with Palestine. We send our brothers and sisters in Palestine our aloha. And we pray for them every single day. We say to the U.S. and to Israel, not in our Moana, not on any Aina. You are not welcome here. Rimka needs to be abolished. All right, and now we will have Misty Pegram from Anakbayan, Hawaii. Uh, aloha mai paho. Good morning, everyone. My name is Misty, and I am currently representing Anakbayan, Hawaii. Um, we are a comprehensive mass organization of youth fighting for national democracy in the Philippines. And before I begin, I would just like to say a big thank you to the speakers ahead of me who gave such great context into everything and everything why we're here today. So as has been mentioned by those ahead of me, in less than two weeks, the Rim of the Pacific or RIMPAC exercises will begin. And as the largest naval exercise, RIMPAC will only bring destruction to the lives, livelihood, and self-determination of the people, especially that of the Kanakamali who are of this land. And at its core, this exercise aims to train all of its U.S.'s allied militaries around the world to participate in all of its genocidal tactics, to conduct the same wars of aggression in their respective countries and in their areas. And it's so important for us to know today the strategic role that the Indo-Pacific Command plays here where we are standing currently today and how their wars of aggression and their provocations in all areas only contribute to their need to stay and remain as the number one imperialist power in the world. In the Philippines, we see this as um, they conducted military exercises like the Palikatan exercise, like the Salaknib exercise, which only aim to increase the, in the tensions in the West Philippine Sea. They conducted these exercises in indigenous lands and in um, the lands of farmers who are only trying to survive up in northern Luzon, which are the areas and regions closest to China. We also see this in the millions upon billions of military aid being given to the Philippines, being given to Israel, being given to these militaries to kill the people of those lands, to bomb the lands that they stand on. We see this in the Philippines as them killing the farmers and the workers who are fighting for their basic rights. And even recently we see in the news of the provocations against Filipino fishermen in the West Philippine Sea where they are being shot with very, very strong water cannons and where they are being uh, 
exploited by the U.S. and their interests in that region. Even now, we see just recently the Philippines released a statement that they will only be participating as observers in the Grimpak exercises this year when they intended to send ships not too long ago. But this is only because they intend to keep their military presence in the West Philippine Sea and the ones who are constantly caught in the middle of it are the people. We see that the ongoing genocide in Gaza, we see this in the continued military occupation of Hawaii, where the, where the only ones who are caught and the only ones who are truly affected by these wars of aggression and um, the military occupation across the world and their imperialist tactics are the people, are the farmers, are the workers who are constantly being exploited and oppressed. But us standing here today and us standing together shows that we will take none of it sitting down. And the struggle against imperialism is a struggle that requires the broadest and strongest united front. And together, we will fight for a peace rooted in aloha, a peace rooted in justice, and a peace rooted in equality for all people. And so together we stand, and the first step of that is to cancel RIMPAC and to end the U.S. war machine on all fronts. From Palestine to Hawaii to the Philippines, Stop the U.S. war machine. All right, and now we'll have Tatsuki Kohatsu from Students Protesting Against Militarism. Aloha, my name is Tatsuki Kohatsu. I'm here at SPAN, students protesting against militarism. We are a group of students at UH Manoa who are protesting the continued militarization of the Pacific. As students, we all come from all across the ocean, including Hawaii, Guahan, and the Philippines, as well as China and the United States. I myself am from Okinawa, Yet another place that has long experienced militarization with the US military and continues to do so with the ongoing deployment of Japan armed forces. As I'm speaking now in Okinawa, a construction of US military installation is destroying Ora Bay, our important precious ecological site and the life that is tied to it. Despite over two decades of oppositions, from Okinawans and our allies, just like the military operations continue to do so in Hawaii, Guahan, and other Pacific Islands. Some of us spam have had the privilege of visiting Makua. There we learned how the military training impacted the land and the struggle to have the land back and destroy it. Through the learning, we also got to learn and think about how to care for each other and the privilege that we have and the privilege of being in the place. As students from all, all across the Pacific, each of us experiences militarization in a variety of ways. And one thing that I believe we all have in common is that we can not never, we can never take for granted the privilege of learning and living in Hawaii. It comes with the responsibilities of learning to care for the land and each other. I'm personally still learning, and there's a lot of learning to do. And part of the learning is how impact and other militarizations are destroying the ocean and aina of Hawaiian islands. As students, we all have the responsibilities. We all have the clear ana. So does our school, the University of Hawaii, also have the responsibilities of being, being a place of learning, caring, and listening. One of the responsibilities then for the school is to listen to the demands made by our friends of SFJP, students, and faculty for justice in Palestine, who have been working patiently and amazingly on creating the space at UH to care for Palestine. UH also has the responsibilities of learning, The US has a military contract through its relationship 
Ő egy nyilvánosságjegyzői lista szinte KTRC. It is a strategic department of defense lista szinte. Through the military contract, QH is still implicated in militarization, contributing to the resources and military technologies. While the 2030 QRC contract, the renewal of the military contract is up for approval this summer. It has not yet gone through a proper and transparent public commentary process. QH is also it has the responsibility to become a place for learning and caring to think about its relationship with the media and its relationship, relationship building with us in the public. Being in Hawaii, the school and students, we all cannot take for granted the privilege, the privilege of having responsibilities for learning to care for the place and each other. As students from all of the ocean, we have the responsibility to care about what's happening with the impact, what's happening with militarization of Hawaii, and what's happening with militarization of all, the, all, all our islands in the ocean. Thank you. All right, now we'll have Pete Doctor from Veterans for Peace Hawaii. Aloha mai kako. My name is Pete Shimazaki, doctor, one of the co-founders of the Veterans for Peace Hawaii Chapter 113. Uh, we are a hui of uh, former military service members, uh, some of us coerced, and of military ohana, who, uh, given our experiences with militarism, are adamantly against it. Um, this cancel rid pack business is nothing new for Veterans for Peace. In fact, I'm gonna to jump to my uh, point here that at our 2020 National Con Convention, uh, Veterans for Peace uh, passed this resolution and resolved that, one, call for the cancellation of the RIMPAC war practices in 2020, this is outdated now, and forever, and two, urge the scaling back of military presence in Hawaii and other parts of the Pacific. Uh, we said that in the past and we stand firm on that in the present. For the following reason, the U.S. uses RIMPAC as a training ground for genocidal regimes while it illegally occupies our country, Hawaii. Plain and simple. I need to enact a couple other points. Um, that while nations including Colombia, Chile, Peru, Mexico have taken principal positions against the ongoing genocide by the Nehinahu uh, regime, including the closing their embassies, cutting diplomatic ties, and imposing sanctions against Israel on the one hand, and yet train their armed forces with these same militaries dripping with non-combatant blood in so-called games in the lands and the waters of Hawaii. Aole. One more uh, uh, contradiction here to call out. It's hypocritical for Indonesia for being so opposed to the Zionists imposed genocide, while they too have been committing its own un ongoing systematic genocide in West Papua since 1969. Aole. We recognize, as those have been used by the military system, that the military in no way is a defense for the security of the people. It is a direct threat. Our greatest resources are our people and our aina and the militaries, plural, are a direct threat to that. And to those who argue that RIMPAC is needed to defend against so-called China, let me remind you, China was a participating country in this RIMPAC exercises. This is a club for military dominance, pure and simple. This has nothing to do with security, except securing political and economic agendas. Nothing can justify what is happening in Palestine. Not even the bogus October 7th narrative uh, can justify what happened, uh, especially when it ignores what hap was happening on October 6th in the past seven decades. In closing, 
VFP Hawaii condemns the exploitation by conscription and poverty draft of the men, women, and teenagers into this divisive system of militarism that exists to protect political and economic national agendas at the expense of the people through blood and taxation. Aole Rimpa! We need rent peace now. Mahalo nui. Aloha aina! And now we'll have Carolyn Hadfield to come up and give a short statement um, as, a, as a resident who was here during the Vietnam War. Now, 53 years ago, every Friday, many of us stood at this very place approaching Makalapa Gate and demanding that the war in Vietnam ended. I've stood here with comrades, some who are here, uh, for many, many years. Liko, Laulani, uh, you know, the numbers go on and on. The Iraq War, the Gulf War. Today, we stand with our brothers and sisters in Palestine who are fighting yet more aggression, death, and destruction at the hands of U.S. imperialism. Yes, Israel's doing the killing, but the U.S. is doing the providing. The U.S. is doing the training for genocide in Palestine and for in countries around the world. The Philippines, you name the places, the U.S. has its, its hands in there. So I want to call on everyone, remember that it is imperialism that is spreading, that has its clutches. The U.S. is competing with China to be the top dog imperialist in the world. So we have to stand together in our millions from all nations and people and to fight this destruction and killing being carried out in our name. Down with imperialism, down with capitalism. Thank you. All right, and now we will have Malika Medina Washington up to the mic.
Aloha nui kako. My name is Imani Altimus Williams, and I am speaking on behalf of Kona for Palestine, which is a grassroots organization run by Kanaka Oibi and Jewish women of color who are committed to anti Zionism and the demilitarization of the Hawaiian Kingdom. I am a core member of Jewish Voice for Peace Hawaii, the largest anti Zionist organization in the world with our Hawaii chapter proudly led by a majority of Jews of color. We are here today to address the ongoing issue of RIMPAC being held in Hawaii, or truly held at all, but also to make the connections between the militarization of Hawaii, the involvement of the illegal state of Israel in RIMPAC, and how these connections affect Jews, of, Jews living in Hawaii. Since 1971, Rim of the Pacific exercises have been hosted in Hawaiian kingdom waters, lands, and skies. Every two years, the state of Hawaii directly profits from and therefore allows an influx of over 30 militaries from foreign nations globally to participate in these war games in the name of so-called security and readiness. But the reality is that these games are held in the name of global imperialism. The state of Hawaii is responsible for the ongoing cultural genocide of Kanaka Maoli and the current physical and cultural genocide of Palestine and her people. The reaffirmed strategic economic relationship between the two illegal states, state of Hawaii and Israel, includes investments from the University of Hawaii in Israel and the Department of Defense the politicians of the state of Hawaii being bought by APAC, the Puna Geothermal Venture on Hawaii Island owned and operated by Israeli company Ormat, and many other insidious avenues. The Israeli occupation forces participate in these so-called games in the name of their national security. However, the truth is that they are terrorizing unarmed Palestinian civilians and building an ethno-state in the name of the global Jewish population. We at Kona for Palestine, as Kanaka and Jewish women say not in our name, we refuse to accept the Zionist terrorist state that exists solely to enact the ethnic cleansing of Palestine, and we reject their active participation in war games that directly contribute to the destruction and desecration of Hawaiian lands. We call for the IOF to be rejected from participating in RIMPAC as a bare minimum action and move, moving forward for RIMPAC to be involved, abolished entirely. As the Hawaii chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace, we are steadfast in our commitment to both Palestinian liberation and Hawaiian sovereignty. As Jews, we adhere to various ethical and philosophical traditions, including Huach Nefesh, saving a life or saving a soul. It is our duty to uphold the teachings of our ancestors, including tikkun olam, or repairing the world. We refuse the continued killing of children, of Palestinians, the obliteration of indigenous culture, and the endless desecration of land and waters for profit by the United States and Israeli militaries, our universities, and other state entities. We follow in the legacy of many generations of great, great Hawaiian activists, their allies, students, and multiracial coalitions of residents who say no to militarism, no to endless wars, and yes to life, yes to solidarity, yes to self-determination, and yes to the proliferation of our lands and cultures. Mahalo. Good morning and aloha. I want to thank JVP for asking me to speak today as an individual Palestinian and I would also like to speak today on behalf of Hawaii for Palestine. My name is Masar, I'm 29 years old and I am a Palestinian. Today I'm here to demand for RIMPAC to be canceled and I don't plan on sharing numbers and statistics to persuade you to do so. It all seems redundant to me. 
I have four beautiful children, all below the age of 10. They haven't seen much of this world yet, but what they have seen so far is how cruel the world can be. At the ages of 9, 6, 3, and 1, they have all been at the front lines of protests and marches to demand the end of the genocide happening on Gaza and the occupation in Palestine as a whole. What does this have to do with RIMPAC, you may ask? It has everything to do with RIMPAC, and it's harming everything in our ecosystem. Global warming is real, and it's man-made. RIMPAC plays a big part of global warming, and you continue to let it happen. Tell me, what exactly does having mass destruction do for us as humans, other than destroy our Earth and separate us when we're all equal to begin with? We all bleed the same blood. Why did you accept this role and position in the military? Why does anyone in general accept a role and position in any field of work? Is it not to better this world? Is it not to build a better future for our children? Do you know who will be out here in Hawaii amongst 29 countries? Israel. Israel should be stripped of their title of being a leader and of being a country. They have no mercy in their hearts and as I stand here with you today in the name of safely conducting military exercises, hundreds are dying in Gaza and in Palestine by the hands of the IOFs. Harriet and Janet Weinberg is the foundation founded by the Israelis. There is not a place in Hawaii that is not funded through them. And as much as one should be thankful, can you tell me why when Lahaina was destroyed by the wildfire and families lost loved ones, the Harry and the Jeanette Fan Foundation only donated $850,000. But when Israel opened fire on civilians on October 7, killing hundreds of visitors, $5 million of aid was sent to Israel. Hawaii has a partnership with Israel, and people are wondering why the system has failed them. Because you condone such acts from atrocious governments by not speaking up and taking action. Everything in life should not be about having more power. Because once you get that power, you just keep wanting more. That crave for more never stop. That craving ends up killing you internally, which then leads you to becoming inhumane. What you do to others will not matter to you, even if it means suffocating and killing someone while kneeling down on their necks. Even if it means raping a pregnant woman in front of her family and killing her in the process. Even if it means harassing and stripping men of their clothes in the hot sun just to ridicule them. This is rim pack is this is what rim pack is truly a part. Stop the killing. Stop aiding so-called countries with funds and weaponry used to kill civilians that are indigenous to their own land in their own land. It's time we look within ourselves and ask ourselves, what can we do to make this world a better place? Before asking yourself that question, know who you are partnering up with. Know who you are sitting next to because shaking the hands of those who are aiding and funding the genocide happening on every indigenous group will only make you lose sight what is important. You cannot do good while in the company of evil. I promise myself, my kids, my people, and my country that I will make every day of my life count that every breath I take is for a free Palestine. And by a free Palestine, I mean a world of occupation because no one is free until we are all free. I used to dream about speaking against the injustice happening to my people. Now it's not a dream, but a reality. And if myself, a young adolescent at the time, had that dream and she achieved it, what's stopping you from achieving that dream that will help all of humanity? Shukran and mahalo. Right, and I would like to invite uh, Emily Kandagawa up to the mic from Malama Maku. It's impossible to stand here this morning without feeling really emotional. Um, thank you, Masar, for what you shared. Thank you, everyone who's, who shared this morning. I'm an Afro-Indigenous person, I'm a Hawaiian national, and it's a, a privilege and an honor to continue to stand with this growing coalition of organizers and, 
and the elevated ancestors who are walking with you and who are protecting you in this work. To the U.S. Pacific Command and participating countries of RIMPAC, I address this message to you as the president of Kalei as a Kia'i for Malama Makua, and as an envoy of the Wai'anae Moku Kupuna Council. We extend greetings to all visitors to our shores by offering the practice of Aloha Aku Aloha Mai. We share with you Hawaiian cultural concepts for building relationships by extending the highest form of respect with the expectation that as representatives of esteemed countries, you will do likewise. As a coalition of community-based organizations rooted in Hawaiian values and driven by Kanako Oivi leadership, we understand that our collective survival and genuine security, locally and globally, depend upon Pono balanced, moral, just systems of governance and conflict resolution that prioritize our collective well-being. We base this work in an ethos of solidarity, diplomacy, and restorative justice because global peace building happens from the ground up. The devastating impact of RIMPAC on Kohawa Ipai Aina since 1971 has been both well documented and heavily protested from increased sexual exploitation of Hawaii's most vulnerable communities to overwhelming environmental degradation of land, sea, and air. The United States as an occupying power, alongside participating countries of RIMPAC, are obligated to respect international laws and conventions in this regard. As the whole world bears witness to the escalation in war crimes committed against our relatives in Palestina, under nearly a century of violent colonial occupation, as well as the violence and exploitation enabled in the sacred lands of West Papua, Sudan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and many other relative sacred lands, it is past time that we come together to envision not a war economy, but a peace economy. What a peace economy looks like in practice. It is past time to build new and culturally appropriate relationships that restore and affirm our humanity and our collection to connection to all lands impacted by militarism. We can support each other in coordinated divestment from militarism to then direct resources toward community-driven solutions that do lay the foundation for lasting peace and justice. With this vision for global peace building, we call on the participating nations of the 2024 Rim of the Pacific Exercises to evolve their practice of deterrence to include long-term genuine security through a foundation of aloha aku aloha mai of cultivating reciprocity through life-giving action we call on all nations to withdraw their military's participation from RIMPAC in compliance with international laws and conventions on occupation and to invest in concerted good faith efforts for community engagement to strengthen diplomatic ties that protect all sacred life. This is what we offer to you. Mahalo. Hola. Mahalo. All right, and now we invite Alihi Las Ihilani Lasconia up to the mic to offer closing remarks in a song.
has no place in Hawaii. R I M P A C has no place in Hawaii. R I M P A C has no place in Hawaii. R I M P A C has no place in Hawaii. R I M P A C has no place in Hawaii. Aloha ko. Mahalo for allowing me to speak here today. I represent a firm Hawaii. If you're not familiar, a firm stands for the Association of Feminists Fighting Fascism, Imperialism, Refutalization, and Marginalization. Yes, sir. We are here today because we believe that RIMPAC should die alongside every other colonial legacy in the Pacific. I am tired of our lives being forcibly oriented by militarization. From watching tanks drive past my grandpa's house in Bulolei, to feeling my parents' house shake in Kaneohe when fighter jets and cargo planes fly too low, to hearing the sound of bullets near my tutu's house in Wamanalo every night at 8 p.m. and associating that sound with knowing it was almost time for bed. Our lives are inundated with imperial violence and the state of Hawaii has made it seem so normalized. When the truth is that there's nothing normal about living in one of the most militarized places on the planet with nuclear weapons, tanks that leak, and soldiers that terrorize our community. RIMPAC is not just a military war games exercise that occurs every two years. It is a concentrated representation of the damage imperialism does to our planet every single day. The weapons tested, bought, and sold in Hawaii are used throughout the globe. We have never consented to this, and will never consent to this. There is no place for RIMPAC in Hawaii. There is no place for RIMPAC anywhere. As Native women and women of color, we know all too well the violence that militarization imposes on our aina and our bodies. In the eyes of the colonizer, land and woman are inseparable because both are seen as something to be conquered and possessed. Over the past five years, there have been multiple cases of femicide where the killer was a member of the U.S. military. During Operation KK Shield, a community-based initiative to catch people soliciting sex from 13-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 38% of the perpetrators were active U.S. military members. During RIMPAC, cases of sexual violence increased anywhere between 30 and 39%. And we see this with bars, and I'm calling out Club 939 for having a huge banner that says, Welcome RIMPAC. They know the sexual violence that occurs, and they're willing to do so because they know they'll make a profit out of it. Hello. That is why we're here today, not to merely make speeches and say our piece, but to get serious, get educated, and get organized, because there's so much work to be done if we ever want to see a liberated Hawaii. From Hawaii, to West Papua, to Kanaki, to Congo, to Palestine, to the Philippines, and everywhere in between, every imperial power must fall. The colonial world they've created does not serve us. Together, we must rise up and become bigger than the powers that try to suppress our right to exercising air, which does not just mean sovereignty, but life, breath, and the ability to rise. Shut down RIMPAC now and forever. Oh. All right. So I've been asked uh, to do a song, and if I could have Khalil's help setting up uh, the Bluetooth speaker, and um, I'm sure a couple of folks have heard this before. Uh, yeah. uh, it's called Drip Drop, the military, we gotta stop. And uh, this song was written years ago, uh, back in 2021, when the Red Hill fuel tanks, not leaked for the first time, but it was one of the largest spills. And it was written at a protest. Um, and for me, I wanna live in a world where I never have to do this song ever again. It's, it's amazing and wonderful to be in community, but the, the life in which I imagine is one where we come together to only celebrate joy and not fight against imperialist powers. All right. I'm going to try to get this feet out. Oh, it didn't work. We have to keep on doing this song over and over again. I want us to go back to Kavakahiko in the time of our kupuna when we were free, when we weren't occupied, when we had the ability and time to just write mele aloha aina that weren't just about resistance but about loving our land. 
I want to get back to that more than anything. Uh, but until then, hey, well, you can follow along with the hook. Alright. Yeah, repeat after me. Drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Two more times now. Drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Now let me take you back to 1943, the year that started this catastrophe when the fuel tanks were created by the military. Reagan Roosevelt was the president, ranked in D. There's 20 tanks in total, they're 100 feet wide, but they're so underground they'll never see the sky. They rest right above our largest aquifer, but this Ina is a mother. Get your hands off of her and now drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Two more times now, drip. Drop the military, we got to stop. Drip, drop the military, we got to stop. This is only what we do, no imagine what we don't know. What a crisis is a time bomb that's bound to explode. The US is nothing more than a war machine. But capitalism reigns supreme, matter of fact. HKT said it best when the US goes to war, Hawaiians lose their land. Just look at what they did to our sacred Makua. I know it's our mother, they did nothing but abuse us. So drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. 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 And now I want us to be poisoned by Uncle Sam. This is imperialism's master plan. So hands off our waters, hands off our daughters. We are not your sheep. You can take us out to slaughter, but keep in mind, the worst is not over. There's oil still leaking in the US, Arizona. It's been for 80 years, but it's a full lower. We will not rest until this fight is over. So drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Drip, drop. The military, we got to stop. Drip. Drop, the military, we got to stop. Drip, drop, the military, we got to stop. When I say van, you say back. Let me hear you. Van, back, van, back, van, back, van, back, van, back, van, back. When I say cancel, you say rim pack. Cancel, rim pack, 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 cancel, rim pack. Ayo. Yo, nakini le po, mamo hawaii. Natives and allies alike, we must rise up and fight against the imperial beach, which is U.S. militarism and imperialism. We know that it doesn't just steal our lands and our waters, but our women, our mahu, and our kane too. I I made a wrong turn trying to get into the parking lot, and was greeted by these two kane, two men of color, and I think about the ways in which. We should be in allyship with each other, but U.S. militarization makes it so that our Kane and our brothers are stolen by this war machine and made to protect something that opposes their own existence. So when we say RIMPAC, when we're saying aole to capitalism, aole to colonization, aole to this imperial beast, we're also saying yes to being better relations with one another, to be in better relations with our Aina, to have a better relationship with our Akuna. It's not just a ole, a ole, a ole, this refusal, but this refusal is done so we can say yes and make life and more space for better things. Things that make us grow and make us survive and thrive as one Lahui community and country. Mahalo. Tata Livingston, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> Had to put that in the area. Okay. Uh, okay, you know, my mind just spin because back to the time of, uh, you know, Vietnam. Good thing I got kicked out of Kamehameha, otherwise half my hey. class died in Vietnam. What comes to mind is 
how prepared are we? Where is our capacity to engage, to prevent things like this from happening? And I go back to Kaho Olave. Kaho Olave and the song of Uncle Harry Mitchell, Kuni Mitchell. 2016, as Laulani and I prepared to go to refile Lilo Kalani's June 17th letter. In my dream, I walked down to the beach road just below the lighthouse in Diamond Head, where I grew up. Sitting on the wall, I see this, you know, nighttime, the tide comes in, sometimes you get driftwood, and there's this kind of like this box thing going like that. Well, in the alley, I go down, you know, you check the shell line in the morning, you go down, open up this box, the body of George Helm. Mm. And Kimo Mitchell was inside that box. So I go back to the time of Mele Okaho Olavi, because it is culture. One of the things that has gives us an advantage here in Hawaii is because of the Renaissance, our cultural Renaissance. Because that is one of the tools that allows us to freely engage. No matter what the circumstances are going to be. But in the love for our Aina, and again, as our Ohana from Pacific returns home, we send them on their way that they will arrive in safely. And that what we do will be a benefit to them. Because sometimes you stand up and boom, they come down even harder. Like the pulley from the kupunas in one night. Let's show them. Aloha. Aloha Aina. Aloha for each other. So. Hello, hello, 
na tua Oh, Havaii Ano ke kau a kau holo me kau puni pa tu ka mana o no ka pono no ka ita imua na pua la na kila kau holo. So on the fifth landing, okay, sometimes I carry one kind of flight thing. Five was the number of people who went to Kaolabi. What is the significance of the number five? The body, the hand, the limb. I got to go on the fifth landing, okay. This is the fifth decade. That means we've seen the four corners of our world in Hawaii. First, we only had one corner. Everybody sitting around and looking at the same corner. Then when another corner came, and we're all going to looking at the corner. So this is the fifth decade. We've been looking at the four corners, and now we get our tongue back. It's like having a mo'o with a tail when you go back. Okay. And the tail, that's what he's got to move. The body no can go. One left like go that, right like go like that. It's the tail. The sum total of what is given from the kupunas from before is in the tail. Okay, how important the generation now. Okay, like even me one time, we call Olavi. Governor would never go up there yet. And the governor, Ige, came by me. He was kind of nervous. I whispered to him, I said, hey, no worry, governor. I have one translator too. Okay? So it's music to my ears, this song on the landing. Fourteen of us tried to go to the island, block our way. We had to sneak on the island. So this is a song called The Greatest Picture Show. The song was written in the federal lockup after they brought us with the Coast Guard. They brought the National Guard. Foreign National Guard come get us. Imagine dark yeah. in the morning. Hey, you guys gotta get up. We'll take you sneaky on a boat, a fishing boat. They had taken all our stuff. We were just heading for Akiwaka. So we all have sneaky and you dark yeah. Well, I just lay down my head for sleep. When a voice whispered your lips.
bombs, checking up the Navy. Well, you be a swallow, sir. The war song. Yeah. So August 26, 1989, East West Center. Here comes the illustrious senator. Comes to the East West Center and opens up a, the, the question of what about 1893? Kekuni is sitting there. And Senator says to Kekuni, this was Papa Ololokai. Why Papa Ololokai? because the people were dying because they couldn't be on the land. They was eating poisoned food. So the senator says to, you know, to Pikuni, well, you have your language. What more do you want? And by the way, when this, this hearings was opened up, there wasn't, Senator, senator uh, Akaka did not show up. And there was a quiet in the room, real quiet, eerie quiet. Most of the people in there not knowing that the representative from Nihau was told to resign from the board because he had gone to Washington, D.C. to take a federal grant. So, the senator reads the agenda, and he, as he hits the gavel, he says, let the cards fall where they may. We can no longer let the cards fall where they may. So they had the four groups. So I asked the guys, I said, hey, we're talking to Leon Nui I said, what, well, can, we, can we be one group? So right at that end, she comes up, she said, yeah, Koliko, you guys can go over there. Our group's name was Naopono. She said, what's your group name? Naopono. This is a song. Because everybody was giving chants and everything like that. But this is what a song that they sang there. It's called Bombing Up Paradise. Love this song. It's almost like, you know, Dave Paradise kind. You know, put up a sparkle lock. Nations together to save the souls who are 
said I won't be able to go to the bash from Pack Bash. Um, but uh, we're very excited to get to um, join forces with folks from around the country, around the world even. Um, we have folks coming from like Canada, Thailand. Um, so yeah, so if folks, uh, we're happy to accept donations. Um, if folks have anything to give. Um, we have something on Instagram to get you that they can take donations. Um, and so we have a post on the Hawaii Committee for Human Rights in the Philippines Instagram. Um, if folks could check that out, um, uh, there is a link and more information there for what will be happening. Um, so yes, please do check that out and anything helps. So we're done now. Oh. Um. 